Welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle, and thanks for joining us today. Now, today's topic is gun control for the children. That's right, because according to the mainstream news media, if you are not willing to accept more restrictions on your liberty, you don't like children, and shame on you. But let's talk about actual facts. Let's talk about some, the number one, the top five accidental deaths in children as compiled by the CDC or Center for Disease Control gov. Now the top five causes of accidental deaths in children, not murders, not deliberate deaths, but accidental deaths, all right, are burns, drowning, falls, poisoning, and car crashes. You say, well, where are gunfire accidents on that? Well, they're pretty far down the list, but they're there, but they're pretty far down the list. They pale in comparison to burns and drowning and falls and so forth. You say, well, um, if, if we need to save the children, shouldn't we be focusing on those? Oh, hang on. Hold on a second. Uh, again, according to the CDC, and this comes from a CBS News story online, CBS News Online. Uh, right now, accidental deaths in children are down 30% from where they were in the year 2000. Now, you probably don't know this because it's good news. And good news doesn't sell newspapers or you know, website subscriptions. Uh, good news doesn't get you uh, upset. Good news doesn't make you want to surrender more of your liberty to the government. You know, We don't need good news. But according to the, uh, the source, it said that uh, you know, there are accidental deaths in children, that is burns and drownings and everything across the board, is down 30%. But... According to the the title of it, it says kid accidental deaths or kids accidental death rates down thirty percent, but we can do more. <laughs> so don't take heart. We're still in a panic mode. And you would say now we've been told by uh, Comrade Barry and others that if we can pass a law and it'll save just one child's life, it's worth it. It's worth doing. It's worth stripping you of your liberties if we can save one child. And when you talk to your uh, anti-gun friends or your liberal friends or those who don't really pay attention to the real world, when you talk to them at work or wherever you go, you'll hear them say things like that. Well, we need to do something to save the children. And you, say, and you could say to them, say, okay, you're, you're absolutely correct. You are correct. What if we could pass a law that would save the lives of 300,000 children a year? Do you think we should do it? I mean, because, you know, Barry said, one, if we can save one child's life, it's worth it. What if we could pass a law that saved the lives of 300,000 children? Should we do it? Now, they might be thinking, hmm, where's this guy going with this? But you might have them so excited, they were like, Oh, I love new laws, and I know, love greater restrictions on my liberty. Yes, pass that law. And you say, okay, bam, I think tomorrow we need to propose and pass a law that bans abortion in the United States of America. And they're like, whoa, er, no, you're changing the subject. We're not talking about abortion. That's a woman's right to choose. That's reproductive rights. And you're like, whoa. But five minutes ago, you said that anything we can do to protect a child's life, we need to do it. Even if it only saves one child. We're talking about, and according to Planned Parenthood's own internal statistics, their own report, they conducted 333,000 and some change abortions in the year 2012. And you're like, well, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. All right, time out, Sparky. What you said to me is, we need to protect the children at all costs, and any law that will protect a child's life is worth it. So, well, is it, is it in, when it's in its mother's womb, is it a child or is it not? Oh, it's an unviable flesh mass. Ah, I got you. I got you. Now, riddle me this, Batman. If a pregnant woman is shot by a burglar or a rapist or a robber, and the infant inside her body dies, why do they charge him with murder? Mm -hmm. That's right. If you shoot a pregnant woman and she dies and the infant inside of her dies, they charge you with two homicides, not one. They don't charge you with conducting an unlicensed abortion. Think about it. If your anti-gun friends are genuinely concerned with protecting the lives of children, how can they want to disarm you 
with their right hand and they think abortion is cool and it's a woman's right with their left hand. You can't have it both ways, folks. If you want to protect the children, you need to be able to accept that children inside the mom are children too. So if a child is born and it's one day old and it gets shot, we need to disarm the entire American populace. But if it's only three or four months old and we, you know, take it out with a vacuum cleaner and throw it in the garbage, that's cool because it's a woman's right. I just want to know where we're operating here. And for the people that say, well, you can't allow guns in homes because they're just too dangerous for the children. We shouldn't allow people who have children at home to have guns. You say, well, all right, let's go down that road for a second. But what are the leading causes of accidental deaths in children? Well, you know, burns, drowning, you know, falls, poisoning, car crashes. All right. Well, in your home, do you have a heater, a stove? Is there water, a bathtub? Do you have a swimming pool? Are there any chemicals that if you were, they were ingested by you or a child would make them die, such as cleaners, household bleach, so forth? How about gravity? Is there gravity in your home? How about a car? Do your kids get in and out of cars every day? If we were really so worried, and people say, oh, no, no, you have to have those things. We have to have those things because we need them. Like, well, then how do children grow up in a household that has fire and water and gravity? How do they survive? Well, we teach them not to touch the stove, and we teach them not to play by the pool, and we teach them not to drink the stuff under the sink. So you can teach your kids not to do that, and they won't. You can teach your kid not to play with matches or put his hand on the stove, and he won't do it, but you can't teach your kid not to play with a gun like a toy because they're just too dangerous. It's baloney, and it's disingenuous. And arm yourself with the facts. The CDC.gov, all the statistics we talked about, they're online. Just Google it. Now, what is our product of the day, our recommended reading? Our product today is called the Total Gun Manual. It's from Field & Stream. It's a Field & Stream publication. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool book. It's full of color in illustrations, just tons and tons of color illustrations. So if you've got a man or a woman in your life who's into guns, this might be a really Really good gift to give them uh, for a birthday or Christmas or whatever you're having. And because we like you, we're going to put the link up for you guys right below there. Now remember, for all things Student of the Gun, to watch the show, to listen to the radio, to read articles, go to studentofthegun.com.